Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the online and in-person Liturgy of the Holy Eucharist here at St. Matthew's Episcopal Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina on this, the 22nd of October, 2023. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, Praise to the Living God, number 372. Good morning. Good morning. Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, continues in its entirety in your service sheet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all <coughs> desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Moses needs some encouragement to continue in the call that God has given him. God reveals his glory to Moses. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 99, found in your bulletin. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. The Lord our God is the Holy One. The Thessalonians are encouraged that their faith is genuine, and it has been proven not only through knowledge, but through the great works of the Holy Spirit in their midst. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly rem remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not, only in, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. 
just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living, true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay ta taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. And he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And if you don't mind, remain standing for just a moment. Um, I am uh, I'm going to do something that would absolutely appall most liturgists in the Episcopal Church. Uh, Marion Hatchett, my beloved professor of liturgics years ago, is probably about to roll over, perhaps even spin in his grave. Um, how many of y'all remember Father Charles? Okay, Father Charles, our assistant of a decade ago, who went through cancer while he was with us and had extraordinary life-saving surgery and treatment at Duke. Father, Paul, Father Charles does not have cancer, but he has gone through profound surgeries over the last two weeks, uh, four abdominal surgeries, uh, ruptured appendix, uh, horrible abscess, lots and lots of things, and he has been near death. He is in intensive care in Richland. He will be in intensive care for at least another week, okay? Very, very precarious situation. So I know Father Charles is not watching us online, but oddly enough, he has been texting me in the middle of the night the last few nights. So what we're gonna do is send a message to Father Charles. So I'm gonna video this and get everybody on it, okay? And then I'm gonna say one, two, three, and just say, we love you, Father Charles, okay? Good morning, Father Charles from St. Matthews. I want you to know that all the folks that are here today, all the folks that are gathered, we have some over here that are waving back over here and here. We want you to know that we're thinking about you, we're praying for you, and folks, let's hear it. One, two, three. We, we love, love you, Father Charles. Charles. Okay. Charles. God bless you, friend. I'll get down there to see you, I hope, on Wednesday. Be well. God bless. Amen. Amen. All right. And we're going to send this to this guy right this second. Sorry, Marion. <laughs> we're going to send it to Chrissy, too. There we go. Now, please be seated. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> thank y'all so very, very much. You know, we have a, a pretty extensive prayer list, and we lift up folks every night uh, at Compline when Father Paul and I are offering that every single evening. Some of y'all are on that list, but all of you are, uh, are lifted up in our hearts, and it's just important to, uh, to give a little hope and a little love and a little proclamation of faith whenever and however we can. So, uh, so thank you. You know, on, on Sunday evenings, we gather for, uh, for Bible, bread, and wine, sort of a, a deep dive into the gospel reading each week. And we always start our discussion with this question. Where are we? Essentially, what gospel and then what do we know about that gospel? When we gather tonight, we'll look at Matthew, our reading from today, and we'll ask questions about Matthew. When it was written, uh, uh, what, what, does it, uh, what does it proclaim basically about our faith? What's unique to Matthew that you don't find in the other gospels? And one of the things we'll note is that, uh, that for years... The gospel according to Mark was thought to be a summary of Matthew. For years it was thought that, uh, that Matthew had been written first and that, that Mark just summarized it. Okay? Now the truth is, what we know is that Mark was actually the first gospel written. And probably from sometime just before the fall of the temple to the Romans in the year 70. So maybe 65, 66, 67. But that is not the first or the oldest of the writings that we find in the New Testament. 
Now, what all the Gospels do, though, is this. They give us a, a picture, an image, an example of Christ and what it looks like to be a follower of Christ. And virtually all of them, at the very end, end up with something about going forth, proclaiming what it means to be a follower. Now, we also know that different denominations live that out in very, very different ways, okay? The, the easy example being in worship. Our brothers and sisters that are Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox, uh, the liturgy they would have this morning would very likely have, have chanting and perhaps on a holy day incense and bells. It would be a little bit different than this. And sort of the other extreme of that will be our brothers and sisters down at the mill or over at New Spring, where if I were the pastor, I kind of have like spiked up hair right now. Um, and we'd have a big praise band back here, a drummer, okay? Mark would be getting funky back there on the bass, okay? It would be a different worship experience. By the way, I look forward to the day that we have, uh, that we have Mark back there getting funky for us sometime. Okay, today, today, that's good to know, that's good to know. But those are all different ways to proclaim some aspect of, of the same message, the proclamation of what it means to be a follower of Christ. Now, yeah, you get a little argument, a little disagreement about that based on the denomination, but that takes us back to the question that we start out with in Bible, bread, and wine. Where are we? And today we have an interesting thing, not necessarily in the gospel. This has been a great day to talk about the Internal Revenue Service, right? But actually, we're going to go a little bit further back. We're going to go to Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians. By the way, Thessalonica, second largest city in contemporary Greece, uh, sort of the capital of the Macedonian era. And it's important to know this about 1 Thessalonians. It is actually the oldest piece of Scripture in the New Testament. It goes back to maybe the year 51, but certainly no later than the year 52. Less than 20 years after the life death, and resurrection of Jesus. So what's the, the basic theme? What is it that this early group of believers, what is it that they're known for? Because the first believers, what they're known for is also what we need to be known for. What does the early church proclaim to the world around it? They, that is us as well, they proclaim and we need to proclaim that we are a people of faith, hope, and love. That's in those first few verses. That's it. That's what every follower of Christ is supposed to be known for. Faith hope, and love. No matter what's going on around us, no matter how angry the rhetoric of the world, no matter how violent the events are around us, no matter how tragic things may be in our own lives, whether we're joy-filled and prosperous or devastated by poverty and loss and despair, or actually, as is most common, somewhere in the middle on most days, dealing with good and bad, and just trying to make sense of it all. Faith, hope, and love. So what inspires that? What inspires faith, hope, 
and love in your life, in my life, in our life? What is it that makes that possible? What is it that feeds our soul? What enables you, what enables me to live a life, or let's be honest, try to live a life, that embodies, that makes real the simple concept of faith, hope, and love. It's an ongoing effort, isn't it? Some days it's either easy, other days it's profoundly difficult. But just so you'll know, there are habits, holy habits, that help. Things that encourage us. Things that strengthen us, that do indeed feed our souls. And the first is this. The first is this. The gathered community of faith. Whether packed to the walls or a few brought in quietly for prayer. A group of believers who invite a group of believers who welcome, whether in worship or in play. It may be coming together for a solemn service in Holy Week or for hamburgers and hot dogs and trunk or treat next Sunday evening. Coming together in the name of Christ whether in worship or education or play, from the youngest child to the oldest woman or man, nourishes our faith. So you're doing that right here just by being here. Maybe waiting for Paul's sermon next week. <laughs> what feeds the soul? How about Wednesday mornings with the food pantry and the free clinic? That's when they open their doors to our friends and our neighbors in need. This year, over 16,000 people will be fed here and have an opportunity to see a doctor. Packing a box of food. Donating your time to make a second harvest run or sitting and handling the computer and paperwork side of the process or gently directing folks to where they need to be. Taking prayer requests. Listening to our visitors' stories of need without judgment. You think you might be feeding them but the soul that's also being fed is your own. Feeding others feeds the soul. It's an act of faith providing hope. Faith and hope. Well, what about love? Well, worship, worship, this is also an expression of love. The devotion of making this possible. The hands that work so diligently in this place. The voices, yours, lifted in prayer. The voices lifted in song. The voices that make this happen. God bless the altar, Gil. Study, too, is an expression of love. It encourages faith. In about 35, 40 minutes, you have an opportunity to walk over and be present with Rabbi Leibowitz as he talks to us about Holy Scripture, the narrative, the story. Study. It's an expression of love. The fact that we are hosting the rabbi is an expression of love doesn't matter if we're talking about the, the study that's a part of our gathered children in formation classes or our adults on Monday night with education for ministry. 
that. While you might want to pin that under the, the faith category, that's love. What feeds your soul? It may be a quiet time in prayer. It may be hard work and volunteerism. Or it may be something else altogether. This feeds my soul. Being present in this moment with y'all feeds my soul. But then this did as well. Yesterday evening, I sat on the edge of a field out at my farm. It had been windy earlier, but as the sun set towards evening, it had died down to just a, a gentle whisper, a whisper of a breeze. Overhead, a flock of geese were winging their way in from the southwest before circling back around and dropping onto the pond behind me. I could hear, I could actually also see the wild turkeys. They had spent the previous hour feeding on the edge of the cornfield off to my right. And then they noisily flew up to roost in the oak trees that bordered the western edge of the property. Back over to the east, a few does were working their way out of the wood line into the cornfield, sort of tentative and gentle in their steps. The air yesterday evening was crisp with that kind of fresh coldness of early fall. And in the midst of those things, the setting of the sun, the darkening of the sky, going from blue to violet to dark, I thought about this place. I thought about all of you. I could see you sitting in these pews and I could feel our creator all around me moments like that they too feed the soul and all of it wherever or however your soul is fed that's what makes us a people of faith and hope and love. Amen. Amen. And God bless Father Charles. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The prayers of the people, form six. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. Minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Andrew, our bishop retired, Robin Paul, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all those on our parish prayer list. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For the people of St. Matthew's. For our preschool, our food pantry, our free clinic, and for the hands that make them possible. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. Gracious Father, we ask spiritual growth for ourselves, our families and friends, and especially for our family, St. Matthews. Grant us growth and understanding and willingness to be your body in this world. Empower us to live the mission of Christ, to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples. In joyful thanksgiving for the blessing of your presence in our lives, compel us to share you with everyone we meet. May our numbers increase, our commitment deepen, our lives be joyfully yours. Make us a God-centered people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now, kneeling as you are able, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. <coughs> May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. God's peace, dear. Please be seated. Good morning. 
Uh, if you are new today to St. Matthew's or if you're an old friend returning, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Uh, there should be a, uh, a card someplace close by in one of the pew racks that you can fill out with your name and address and number. Please do that. Put it in the offering plate or give it to one of our ushers or to Father Paul or to me so that we can welcome you and help you be a part of our family. Ascribe to the Lord. Yes, sir. Um, my liturgics professor, Thomas Talley, would also hate for someone to make comment on the sermon, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> my beloved, um, I know you heard the sermon, and I, I am compelled to seek to define for us what we heard. Because I know it when I hear it. Every once in a while, it is incumbent on the rector of a parish. And there's no, there's no defined moment when it has to happen except when the spirit moves. And a rector must, and I use that word, I don't use that word too often, must, share with his community who he sees when he looks at his community in a way of redefining for the community in a moment in time who that community is. What you did today, Father Rob, is define for us afresh based on Holy Writ, 1 Thessalonians, who we are. And why is it important? because we're on the precipice of change and growth. And when that happens, it's always important to say, who are we going forward? I know it when I hear it. And that's what you did today. And my beloved, because I love y'all, I don't want you to miss it. <laughs> we just heard a redefinition of who we are going back to our ancient roots as church and now going forward who we will be based upon that same principle. Faith, hope, and love. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Thank you. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. I'll be signing autographs after the service. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company in heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new, and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
My beloved sisters and brothers, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
inside covers of our Books of Common Prayer for our prayers for sending forth our lay Eucharistic ministers. Joseph, Catherine, and Atha, we send you out to share communion this week with Don Davis, Juanita Thaxton, and Bonnie, Dwayne, and Jill Nelson. May you carry the prayers of all of us as you take this sacrament of Christ's presence. May those who receive it from you be strengthened and encouraged in the community that we have together in Jesus Christ. In the healing name of Jesus, and with the compassionate embrace of the family of St. Matthews, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts of our Lord's spiritual body and blood, that those to whom you go may experience with us the majesty and mystery of his presence through the sharing of the wafer and the cup, May the one bread and the one wine call us into binding awareness, unity. Nothing, whether it be distance, illness, or age, can ever separate us from the knowledge of our personal worth and our oneness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Tom. Catherine, thank you. Atha. Is it? Yes. No, wait a minute. No. I did not know. I needed to do that. Here, hold it. It's in the other one. It's in the other one. Here, here. No, 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 no. Here, do this. Do that. There you go. Got it. And now, my beloved, praying together, let us say, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, make us perfect in every good work to do his will and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and abide with you and within you always. Amen. And now, my beloved, as Abel, let us stand and sing our hymn for going forth, Jesus Shall Reign.
Please be seated. Um, I really want to respect the rabbi's time today, so we want to get the announcement done as quickly as possible. And for all the adults, please head over to the library conference room. And I know we've got some program for our kids today, and that'll be in the bigger classroom, the godly playroom. Okay, so, Jackie. Jackie Mickley here. Um, I just want to invite kindergarten through fifth grade. We are having a great lesson today. So if you want to come with me, kindergarten through fifth, and my middle school helper, come with me and we'll head over. Good morning, I'm Grace Keller. Um, I was asked by Shannon to give you an update on our pledges, and I'm happy to say that we have, so far as of last Friday, we have received 28 pledges in the total amount of $72,000. So we have about $400,000 more to go. So, <laughs> or maybe 300, but anyway. Um, so get your pledge in. Um, they need to be in, I think, in four weeks. Uh -huh. And. Um, and let's keep this church going and let's keep feeding our souls. And one way to feed your soul is to become a greeter. So anyone interested in becoming a greeter, please get in, get in touch with me. It's a wonderful way to meet people and to uh, feed your soul. Thank you. Amen. On your mark, get set. Good morning, my name is Christina. I'm Director of Youth, Children, and Family Formation. I just wanted to extend a very quick uh, and warm welcome invite for everyone to join us next Sunday for our fall social. Um, you should have a leaflet in your bulletin uh, about that with all the details you need. Um, I think we need like maybe four or five more trucks uh, for the trunk or treat. Um, so if you're interested in that, please give me a shout so I can write your name down somewhere and you're going to have to compete with Father Rob's, so Full just prepare, size candy bars, people. prepare yourselves. Um, but That's yes, right. uh, that is, yes, please come on, come all. We do have EYC for tonight, and it is from 5.30 to 7, right around the same time as Bible Bread and Wine, so that's great for the whole family. You can send the teenagers to us and go do Bible study on your own, and that is all for me. And congratulations to Katie Soto. Her mom and dad are here. Uh, two of her family members were uh, in our acolytes. I believe she is a new member of Dawson Youth Leadership Council. Is that right? Audrey. Pardon me. I just I just promoted you to do. That's right. I've just promoted the the 29 year old mom to <laughs> Dawson Youth Leadership Council. Yes, Audrey. Congratulations. And. Uh, who, who would like to do trunk or treat? Who, who is available to have a trunk to give out candy? Come on. Come on. Ooh, we got Heather. We got John. Okay, we're going to need some more people. And don't let the big candy bars intimidate you, okay? And over here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so also next Sunday is uh, the Vestry Forum. So if you want to come and find out what Vestry does or if you want to tell Vestry things that you would like to do or like to see done, then... Next Sunday is the day to come out and do it. We're taking nominations for um, the next term for vestry, and we need to fill three places. That's Big news. So the, the rabbi will not be with us next week. He'll be with us for two Sundays after that. But again, it starts today. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Donna Simpson, and we are going to be starting up our rehearsals for this year's children's Christmas pageant on the Sunday of November 5th. So it's for kids who are kindergarten through whatever the cutoff age is for EYC, <laughs> to come and um, start practicing on our pageant for this year. Be Christmas Eve. Thanks. Please stand. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 